You're listening to Power Pearls Podcast, intuitive, purpose-driven yarn crafting to empower your knits and pearls. If you're ready to create a holistically balanced life and business that converges creativity with mindful living, and you're not afraid of making money working hard and have the drive to succeed, then sign up now for my free 30-minute business coaching discovery sessions by going to powerpearlspodcast.com forward slash free strategy session. And if you sign up now, you'll actually be entered to win a live on air coaching with me. So make sure that you check that out because you could get featured on the podcast. And so when you sign up, you'll learn some basic strategies and we'll see if working together is a good fit. So let me help you structure a comprehensive program to pave your creative business path. Again, go to powerpearlspodcast.com forward slash free strategy session to sign up today. Before we get going with this episode, I just want to hop in here really quick because I know that you find value in each and every one of these episodes, and I know hearing them means a whole lot to you. So I actually want you to take this a step further. I want to invite you to become part of a a special movement of a community of other seekers on their yarn crafting path, just like you, who wish to learn grow and empower themselves as makers, knitters, and creators, and lift others up in the process. So you know that quote, a rising tide lifts all boats. I I firmly believe that we all have the power to help benefit each other one person at a time and stitch by stitch. I'm here to help you empower your knits and pearls from the inside out. So I would love for you to check this out, to see what the the community is all about, because I know it's going to make a difference and it's going to transform your own yarn crafting journey. So visit powerpearlspodcast.com forward slash community and get details as well about a special gift that I'm offering when you join the community by May 10th. All right, so on to the episode, and I hope you enjoy. Hey, Power Pearlers, I want to welcome you to another episode of Power Pearls Podcast. Today, I am joined by Allison Green, and she is with the Barocco Design Team. And so we're going to be chit-chatting today about the Knitter's Planner, she has a design in in the planner, and also Barocco is one of the featured yarn companies as well. Uh, Allison is a returning guest, so she was on the show. Gosh, I can't remember now, but we <laughs> we were we uh, were talking all about a cables knit along, and so Allison is a self proclaimed cables queen. <laughs> and we're going to talk more about cables, her her design, which encompasses cables. And uh, and yeah, so let's get started. Allison, welcome to Power Pearls Podcast, or welcome back. Thank you. Great to be back on the show. Great. So, um, you know, I shared just a tiny bit about you. I mean, so you're with the Barocco design team and you wear many hats over there, but I just, I want to um, have you pick up where I left off here and share a little bit about yourself and your background. So go for it. Uh, Sure. So I've been with the Barocco design team for about five years now. And um, yeah, I I love my job here because I get to do a lot of different kinds of work, um, which kind of uses a lot of different parts of my brain. So I get sort of the creative design side of things and the technical side of things, and then the more sort of um, administrative side of things, um, managing uh, the flow of what happens here. And um, yeah, so that's all really great. Um, before I came to Barocco, um, I had been, um, an independent designer and a technical editor, um, freelance, uh, for several years. Um, and I'd been teaching knitting since like the dawn of time, uh, <laughs> since the 
really since the nineties, actually, um, when I was in college in the nineties, I was already knitting and like, not that many people were oh, knitting at that I point, know. especially not a lot of young people. Yeah. Um, and I, but I would knit, uh, like I was a theater major in college. And so I would knit during rehearsals and stuff. And, um, people would see me knitting and be like, Oh, that's so interesting. I want to, I want to try that. And so I started teaching these little mini knitting classes. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and then I just continued. And, um, in the, in the early two thousands, I started working in yarn stores. Um, and I got to work for, I got to work for a really amazing person, um, named Berta Karapetian, who was the founder of Carabella Yarns. And she had a really, um, unique store. I believe it's still open in New York city, uh, called school products where they, um, they had a lot of like mill ends, um, of this, like fancy designer yarn. A lot of it was more for machine knitting than hand knitting, but it was a totally interesting place. And, uh, and she really got me started like making like writing knitting patterns and, and designing a little bit. So awesome. that's my, my quick history. That's your quick history. <laughs> so what do you do exactly at Barocco? Give me like a day in a life. Day in the life. Well, it's really seasonal. So, um, because we're, you know, we, we release our fall, uh, fall winter collection, um, at the end of June and our spring summer collection at the end of January. Um, so it kind of like a day in the life really depends on where we are in the season. So like right now, um, today actually is the last day of the photo shoots for our fall collection. Um, so, uh, leading up to that, it's been a lot of, um, making sure all the samples are getting here, which is always exciting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> Um, and a little terrifying. Um, and then, you know, as the samples come in, it's sort of evaluating, like, did this come out the way it was supposed to come out? Do we need to fix anything? Um, and then like blocking the project the projects and things like that. Um, and keeping a big spreadsheet of everything, all of the pieces in the collection. Um, so the fall, like the, the fall winter collection, like this fall winter collection has six, booklets um of six patterns each and then four pdf only collections which have four uh pdfs each six and six and four and four and um you know so and then we also have a free pattern every week so we had to get a bunch of those knit ahead of time so we can could get those in the photo shoots um so I didn't actually count how many pieces it is. It's something like 60 yeah. pieces or something. I was like trying to and do the math here and I'm like, oh, yeah, wow. Uh, I'm not gonna do math and that's per I'm season good at math, like, on paper, but not in my head. <laughs> so that's per season. Uh, oh my. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's a huge, uh, it's a huge push to get all of that designed and then knit. Um, you know, I end up usually knitting a few things myself, um, just because it was some, well, it's always interesting to like designing things and not knitting them yourself is terrifying. <laughs> um, like, and some kinds of things, um, like a pretty, like a, like a fairly, um, like a fairly typical sweater pattern, uh, is actually pretty easy to have somebody else knit because, you know, that is just figuring out based on the gauge. And then, you know, maybe I'm throwing some cables or some lace panels or who knows what else in there, but at least it's like a pretty predictable shape. Um, but something like a hat is actually a lot harder for me at least to, uh, to design it and send it out to somebody else to be knit because, um, I really kind of want to design it on the needles. Um, so, and actually my, you know, we'll get into more my design for the knitter planner, but like that one, I, I have a sample knitter knitting that for me. I didn't because of the timing of it right in the middle of our season. I was like, I can't knit this myself. I have to send it out. And, um, and even that one, I was like, sh she got to like the top of the hat and was like, um, it's really pointy. I was like, oh, oh yeah, that's not right. <laughs> like, please go back and let me redo these decreases for you. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So luckily we have some really good sample knitters who are very patient with us. <laughs> oh, that's great. You know, and I know that learning, like in the very beginning when I was designing, you know, it's, it was so like to design on the needles, you know, you, you have so much more control and but if right. you send it off to someone, you know, you have to trust that what you do on paper makes sense. Like you can actually think in three dimensions or say, oh yes, I know how that's going to behave when I do this, that, or the other thing. And I think that just comes with like experience, right? The more you do that type Absolutely. of thing. Um, so gosh, what is, what are the logistics like to, to make, 
60 patterns happen. I mean, you know, it's like, <laughs> because, um, that's, that's, that's a lot. I mean, it, it's, so, it is a so lot. Do you, you have a yeah. series of, of, of sample makers and like, so how do you, how do you really organize yourself to make that happen? Um, I mean, it's, it's really, I like, I live and die by my spreadsheet. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> yes, thank goodness for spreadsheets. So it's, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's all about the spreadsheet, you know, making sure it's, and I work really close. So our design director, Amy Christopher's, um, she is the one who, uh, assigns all the pieces to, um, all of us on the design team. And she does a bulk of the designing herself. Um, and, uh, so, you know, really it's, so she and I communicate a lot and, you know, we work together on the spreadsheet. So she'll fill in, you know, all the colors. Um, she's started, uh, helpfully putting in, especially with new yarns, um, you know, making sure she puts in like what the, like the color number and then like what color it is. Like this is a red because, you know, just to avoid sending out the wrong color, things like that. There's a lot that can go wrong. And most of the time we, you know, we're able to roll with like little mistakes, but, um, you know, there have definitely been things that have happened in the past where I was like, Oh, that's not the color I meant. Um, those colors got trans, like those numbers got transposed, things like that. Um, so it's just a lot, it's just a lot of details really. Um, and kind of keeping it all straight. Um, it, yeah, it's a lot. We have, um, you know, Amy and I both mostly write our own patterns, um, and send them out to the knitters. Um, and it's a hu it's just a huge push to get them all written. And then we also have, um, someone on staff, Brenda York, who, um, writes, writes a lot of the, and kind of writes the final versions of the patterns that go to our technical editors. Um, but, but they, the, I mean, it's really the knitters are, are amazing because they're, you know, the patterns, there's not enough time to have the patterns tech, you know, have them tech edited prior to the knitting. So it's really just a first draft that maybe one of us has had time to quickly like check the math on. But, um, you know, they're definitely like one of the things that I always am emphasizing with all of my um, sample knitters is like, please, please, please ask questions. If something seems like it doesn't, it's not working correctly. Like it's not doing what you thought it was going to do. Like just ask me cause we do make mistakes. Um, and, uh, it's an arduous process oh, for sure. Getting it all made. <laughs> so what but do you, yeah, stuff happens, you know? Um, so what, do, what do you love most about being part of the Barocco design team? Oh, wow. Um, you know, I, I think, like I said earlier, like I just, I love my role particularly because I get to use all the parts of my brain. Um, I, like, I, I really am so grateful that I found a job that I, it's like a dream job for me that I get to design and I get to use my technical skills, um, and my managerial skills all in one, um, in one role. It's, it's, really, I, I really am grateful <laughs> to be here. Um, and it's a really good company to work for. I think people think of Barocco. I probably talked about this last time too. Like people think of Barocco as like a big company because in the knitting industry, we're one of the yeah, bigger definitely. players that have been around for so long, but, um, it's actually a really small company. Mm -hmm. Um, there's, uh, like five of us on the design team. Um, you know, there's, three people in customer service. There's like a small handful of people in the warehouse. Um, and then the, the owner is Warren and Caroline Wheelock and, um, and their executive assistant. And that's pretty much the whole company. So it's, um, and it's just really good people. Mm -hmm. Really, really oh, yeah. good people. I love you guys. So how does your personality play a role in your work? Uh, you know, I think that the biggest way that my personality plays a role in my work is that I'm, I tend to be very even keeled. Uh, like it's, I'm pretty unflappable most of the time. And so, and that is really necessary in my role, especially during this time of year when we're like crunching up against deadlines. Um, you know, like I get stressed out, sure. Like anybody, but I'm able to keep a level head and that's really helpful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what are your favorite designs? Like the things that you like to, the elements that you like to include in designs? 
Yeah. Um, well, I mean, as you know, I love mm-hmm. cables. Uh, and, and that's definitely been something that has come gone through like all of my design work uh, or, you know, like it's been a through line since I started designing. Um, uh, and, you know, and I love lace. Uh, I, I definitely tend to go for like cables, lace and like stranded color work. Those are kind of like mm-hmm. my go-to. I tend to one of the things I've been working on, um, and that's actually been another great thing about working on a design team is, you know, I can't always just design the really complicated, ridiculous things that I really like to do. Um, I've been forced to really, you know, in a lot of my designs, like really simplify things. And that's been, um, like just a great, like a great thing to have to work on. Um, and it's really taught me a lot because even though like, I really like knitting the complicated things, like you don't always want to wear a sweater that's like, you know, got all the bells and whistles. (laughs) Like sometimes you want something a little more clean and classic. And it's also, you know, not every knitter or most knitters are not insane. Like I am and like everything to be complicated. (laughs) I've even myself, like I've started embracing like, Oh, sometimes it's really nice to just knit stock net stitch. Oh yeah. (laughs) I know. Yeah. Because it's like, it's so much fun to like, you know, work out a new stitch and kind of challenge your, you know, your knitting, your knitting expertise. But at the end of the day, Mm -hmm. sometimes you just want to wear something that's just sort of like, you know, has an interesting silhouette and it's just like all your garter stitch, but that can be boring. That can be boring to knit. Right. I mean, it can be, it can be, but it's, you know, but then it's also (laughs) just nice to have those boring knitting projects for like when you're you know, at the, at the, in the doctor's waiting office, waiting room and, you know, or sitting in front of the TV, watching a movie or whatever. Exactly. That's why we have multiple projects going at one time. Oh, I don't understand single project knitters, like people who, who are like monogamous to one project at a time. And, you know, they do exist. They are out there. I know, there are I've seen them. I've met them. <laughs> it's, but it, I just don't understand it. I know. <laughs> I don't either. But anyway, it's all good. Um, that's why we're all different. So let's switch gears. We're going to talk about the knitters planner. So I just wanted to first say thank you that you're, you know, thanks for being a part of this. I'm so excited that you, that you are. And I'm so, so happy that Barocco has agreed to, um, to be one of the featured yarn companies. So this is a thrill. And, uh, you know, so the planner comes out in 2020 and we're just behind the scenes now, just really fleshing out all the details. And, uh, right now it's, and it's very much like the way, you know, the way it was when I worked on the magazine. So right now we're working on the designs and then later it's going to be all the production and the layout and the, what do the spreads look like? And what do the weekly pages look like? I mean, we pretty much know what that's going to really look like, but we're going to, we're still asking those questions. We want to get it right. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. but right now you're working on, um, hat design. Uh, so it's, uh, cables. Oh, what a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> but I wanted to give like a little teaser. Um, so what is the inspiration behind your cable hat design? And, and, and I was going to say why cables, you know, because you said you love cables, but why, and what fascinates you about them? Yeah. I, you know, I, and I was thinking about this question of like, why cables? Um, because yeah, like what, I don't know what I like thinking about what I love about them specifically. And I think like part of it, so I started actually getting into this really interesting philosophical like thing about cables by (laughs) myself. So what, so the first thing I was thinking about, like, so ribbing, even if you just go to ribbing and taking out cables for a second, but like ribbing in a way is like an optical illusion because Mm. you're making vertical, what, what look like vertical strands, but you're making it horizontally and it just creates these vertical lines visually, but you're making it horizontally. And so, and then with cables, it's like now you're taking those vertical strands and you're doing all kinds of crazy things with them, like moving them around and crossing them over each other. And I like, and I, so I think like that's part of it for me is that it's like, you're, it's like an optical illusion in a way, because you're not really crossing anything. You're crossing your stitches, but you're not like, the yarn, each row is still going horizontally as you're making it. And so I think that's kind of magical. Um, I don't know. And I just think they look cool. Yeah, Yeah, that's really what. Well, this is true. And they're so, they're easy. (laughs) I mean, for the most part, but I think don't like just kind of going into the philosophical, but maybe like kind of diving into the, like the kind of the brain or the interworkings of the brain, the cable maker's brain. 
know, mm-hmm. would you say that it's similar to that of like a lace knitter? You know, because you're manip- manipulating stitches, you're moving them. Right. I mean, not with lace, not like you're moving them per se, you're not really moving them in cables either, but reorienting or when you knit them, right? right. So, well, and with lace, it's sort of similarly, mm-hmm. you know, when you're making those decreases, slanting left or slanting right, as, you know, often in a lace design, you've, you're stacking a bunch of them on top of each other. So again, you're sort of creating these lines, but they're not really lines. Like it's, that line isn't, like it's just a visual. I don't know. I just think that's I, I'm I'm. It's an interesting thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. And I I think it's really fun to be able to do something like you said. Cables are not really very hard usually. Um, I mean, there are certainly degrees of difficulty depending on how complex you're getting with it. But it's something that looks really hard, and it's not usually. Um, and that's always really satisfying. Hey there, I got some good news to share with you before we dive into this episode. So if you love Power Pearls, I just want to let you know that now you can become a member. Yes, Power Pearls podcast is now a membership club. So let me tell you a little bit about what you get when you join. You get unreleased in-depth extended episodes and my lightning round questions that I ask each and every guest. And you also get access to a free resource, discounts, special offers, and occasional giveaways that my guests will offer to you as a member. Other exciting things coming your way are knit alongs, free patterns, and a limited edition handmade knitting bag. So that's in the works and that's really super exciting. So you don't want to miss out on that. So to get all this goodness and to join the club, visit powerpearlspodcast.com forward slash become a member. And that's one word, become a member. And, and, you know, even though it's easy, it's not like, you know, okay, here I am, I'm knitting every row, I'm knitting every row. Like you actually have an action to perform at like, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever point in that, like, oh, here it is. Oh, it's the cable row. It's the cable, you know, and you get to kind of either use your cable needle or if you're daring enough, no cable needle, which... I really don't even use a cable needle myself. I don't know. What do you do? Yeah, I almost never use a cable needle unless I'm doing like six over six or something. Because mm-hmm. um, it goes, it, it definitely, and that's one thing I think with cables that, you know, sometimes it, I think especially if you are using a cable needle, it can feel like, oh, it's really slow going. But if you can train yourself to to go without the cable needle, then it can really just kind of truck along. And you can really, the other thing that I think, I think part of it is just, being a sort of visual person, like being able to see, oh, right, that cable is supposed to slant to the left. And so I have to manipulate the stitches in this certain way to make them slant to the left. Um, That's kind of a good little brain workout. Yeah, totally. And also, you know, there, when you're not using a cable needle, you know, those stitches, they kind of lock in place. They're not going to go anywhere. And I think it's sort of like a safety blanket to use you know, to use the cable needle, I think to a degree, (coughs) excuse me, I am getting over a cold, as you know. So it's like every now and again, I get this like, uh, sorry, I had to clear my throat. So, um, so, so the hat that you're designing is like a slouchy, like a simple taste of cables. And that's why I thought it would be a good idea to do, to do this as a hat instead of like a sweater or like a big project, because, you know, a lot of the people that are going to be introduced to the knitters planner, there's going to be a range of, of, uh, skill, you know, of, of, you know, there, there'll be novice knitters, there'll be some experts, there'll be the intermediates. And I think that we're only going to have a handful of, you know, of designs of patterns. And we want to be able to give options for, you know, like in your case, we've got this beautiful hat, they get to taste the cables. And then if they want, they can work a two color cable, which might be like, ah, that's crazy. But no, you know, it's like a lot like I, I like to consider it a lot like mosaic, as far as the way you're using color, because you're never managing more color 
you're, you're never managing, like if you have two colors, you only have to worry or however many, you only have to manage one color per row, right? So on the right side of the work, when you're going to work that cable, if that's, I'm trying to think if, I guess it depends on where you're, you know, if, you're, if your background is the, op- is the contrast color. But can you just talk a little bit about the... Yeah, well, I, so works. I think I am actually doing it a little bit differently than what oh, you were. Sorry, <laughs> that's one um, way of doing it. But anyway, please. Elaborate. That is one way of doing it. Um, the way I was, I'm doing it is, um, is actually more like a blend of um, intarsia, sort of, and. Um, so you're basically, you have, so if you think about your cable having like strands, like the strands of the, like the, like, if you think of a rope cable, you've got like one strand going over another strand, right? So the way I like to do it is if you have, um, a background color and then you have that strand is, uh, is just a separate piece of yarn, um, that's another color. So you're still, and it's, so it's actually very intuitive because you're always like knitting the stitches that are the color, like you're knitting with the color that the stitches are, if that makes any sense. So you're, it's not hard in Tarja and it's not hard like stranded knitting because you're always just keeping the same color on the same stitches. Um, and, and it doesn't end up being like, um, in a, like annoying in Tarja where you've got like bobbins all over the place. Cause you can just, cause you're only, using that strand for a couple of stitches at a time you're you can just kind of take a break like a yard or so oh, yeah. strand of yarn um and uh and use that oh, that's exciting so. i can't wait to uh to try it out because i haven't made i haven't worked color cables that way i did it kind of the other way that i was mentioning because hey, yeah you know, just i actually haven't done it that way but i've seen patterns that that use that technique well, it's really and cool. i think it depends on how you're incorporating the color because one of the, the, the you know design that i did where it was the let's say the color the cable was like one solid color but then the background i kind of did a like a garter stripe, so to speak. So it was the two, oh, two colors. Cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. yeah, it kind of blended both colors. Oh, I love that. So was, that was yeah. kind of a different fun way to do it too. Okay, cool. Absolutely. So yeah, so that is a little taste of what's going to come. Okay, so mm-hmm. let's talk a little bit about your own personal planning system of choice because yeah. I always, I, I really like to ask this question because everybody has their own way of doing it. And I think this is, because I've been doing live videos. Um, for the knitters planner. We just started doing them and this is going to be a topic. This is a hot topic. So did, are you a digital kind of a gal or are you a pen to paper planning person or are you a hybrid or do you like, you know, use a hybrid of both? Yeah, I'm definitely a hybrid. Um, and I kind of use different, um, methods depending on what it is. So I have a, like, I have a, Well, a journal, which started out as a bullet journal, and I'm still kind of using that system for that paper planner, but not really, but not really. It's mostly just a to-do list that's on paper, to be honest. But, um, but I do like having a notebook that I keep at my desk at work that, um, I know I bring to all the meetings and everything, um, that has like the bullet planner method of, um, you know, making a, an empty box and then filling in the box when the thing is completed. Um, and you know, when it, when the page gets too gnarly, like even if not everything is done, like making a new page and like moving some things over that didn't get done previously. Um, so I do really like that analog method, um, for when I'm like at my desk at work. Um, and it's also nice just to have that notebook too, because then I can use the same thing for like making notes about something that I'm knitting, um, you know, that I'm designing on the needles. Um, I can write down what I'm doing as I go in the same notebook. That's just always right there. Um, so that I really like that system, um, that I've kind of adapted over the years. Um, but then I also, um, I am, I live and die by iPhone reminders oh, as well. Gosh, yeah. So like if there's something that really needs to happen like at a specific time or on a specific day, um, like I love iPhone reminders and I love that I can like, if I'm, you know, like even if I'm in my car, I can like quickly with Siri be like, remind me on Thursday at 9am to pay my bills. Um, 
because yeah, otherwise it's really hard for me to remember to do things on a specific day. Yeah. I would, I was going to say, sometimes it's really simple methods. Cause you know, I, I could say, Oh, I love Asana and I use Evernote and I have my paper planner, and blah, blah, blah. but you know, sometimes just having the alarms, cause I do the same thing on my phone where I will just set an alarm to remember something. Um, so yeah, because, um, and, and then I just, I was thinking about this, um, you know, when it comes to putting pen to paper, because the, one of the things that, um, and you know, I've heard this years ago and maybe you have too, but there's something that is, that happens that doesn't happen when you're typing or, you know, you, you mm. know, uh, using your thumbs, right. <laughs> On your phone, when you're actually writing down something with a, with a pen, it sets this into yourself, into your subconscious in a very different way than it does than if you're oh, typing. Yeah. And also, absolutely. I also think that, um, you know, if you're using your digital device way too much, instead of like writing things down, you know, I'd say, I know for myself, it's like this feeling of fatigue. It's like digital device fatigue. I just made that up. I don't know if someone else has ever said that, but it feels like this, it's like, yeah, it's this feeling of fatigue. It's like, it's just enough, like put that thing away. You know, even yeah. though I think it's so efficient to have my phone or my computer, but that can get, there. there's a little bit of a kind of a fatigue or just, there's just too, you know, it's good to just let that sit, you know? I agree. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so the yeah. other thing I really like digital reminders for though, is like recurring tasks. Oh yeah. Um, like I have on my on my computer at work, like there are things that have to happen like every Friday and every Monday, you know, it's like every Monday I have to put up our free pattern for Tuesday on our website. And so I just have that pop up because, and I worry sometimes though, that I'm like too reliant on those like, digital mm. reminders. But, um, I don't know. I was talking to my aunt, um, a while back and like, she, she said to me, Allie, you know how we've always been like scatterbrained, like all the women in our family are really like, we can't remember anything. And I'm like, yeah, I know exactly <laughs> yeah. what you're talking about. And she's like, well, just wait. Cause it gets so much. <laughs> Yay. It's like, don't tell me that. I don't need to know that. <laughs> Good news. Yay. So what does your planning style say about your personality? Cause everyone's different. They do things differently. Yeah. Like, is there some way that you write things that's sort of unique to you? Um, you know, I think, I don't know. I mean, I guess one thing I would say about it is I think that the way that I've kind of cobbled together a few different systems, um, is a bit indicative of my personality of sort of going the flow and like making, making do with what I have. Um, so I don't know. I, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's great. Now, I always like to ask that question because, you know, sometimes, you know, because we're all so different, we have many different ways of doing things. So I always mm -hmm. like to get that, um, out there. So anyway, I think it's true. Yeah. I think people tend to think of me as like really organized. And then, and I like, part of me is like, why do you think that? And then I'm like, but I am, I just have peculiar little systems. For yeah. It. <laughs> peculiar. We're all peculiar beings, aren't we? <laughs> okay. So, um, is there anything that you want to share as far as like a knit along or is there, a, you know, something going on right now that you want to uh, talk about? Cause you guys are always up to something. Um, we are, I was like, no, but yes, um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> we do have the knit along coming up. Oh, um, we're going to be doing a knit along. Um, I'm not sure of the exact dates. Um, I'm, I can find out and maybe we can put them yeah. in the show notes or something. We're okay with that. Um, oh, but I think it, it's happening in April and May. I want to say something like that. Um, we're doing a, a knit along. We're calling the marshmallow knit along. Uh, and what it is, is we have, um, there was a design from a number of years now called mallow that was really, really popular and kind of remained like it's sort of perennially popular. Um, it's a cardigan with this beautiful, um, lace back. Uh, it's like got a huge, it's a huge lace chart. I will say that if you're afraid of lace charts, this might not be the, the knit along for you, or this could be your opportunity to conquer that fear. Um, it's really, um, it's just a gorgeous, um, floral lace design, um, that takes up most of the back of the sweater. Um, 
so it was originally a cardigan, um, and it was originally in Maya, which is a Barocco yarn, which uh, is now discontinued. We're re-knitting it um, in our Barocco linen stone wash yarn. Um, well, we have re-knitted and we're reshooting it probably today, actually, um, maybe even as I speak, uh, as we tape this. And, um, and then there was a, and then Amy Palmer, our media director did a, um, a little top, like sleeveless top version of it, which, um, was called Marsh, uh, and using that same lace chart on the back and a really cool, like V-neck, um, design, which I knitted actually myself last year because I, I love it so much. Uh, I love the cardigan version as well though. So they're both really, really cool. So we're doing, and that we are, um, we've had re-knit and, um, another, that one was knit in modern cotton DK, which is still a current Barocco yarn. Um, and we now also, uh, are re-knit it in our new, um, Barocco mantra, which is a silk yarn. Um, uh, that's just gorgeous. I'm, I'm knitting two projects in that yarn, actually. <laughs> I love that yarn. So um, anyway, so we're doing this knit along where you can do the sleeveless version or the cardigan version. And uh, it's going to be cool. That's exciting. So, you know, what? I was sitting here thinking about all the things that I've made, uh, you know, all the Barocco patterns I've made. And when I think about my successful project completion, I think everything that's, I, you know, sweaters, especially finishing, mm a sweater and wearing it and being like, yes, I did this. It's been a Barocco pattern, by the way. Oh, awesome. And, um, and right now I'm working on um, gelato, the gelato pattern. Do you know which one I'm oh, talking yeah. about? It's like the yarn. I can't think of what the yarn is right now. It's a cotton. Gosh, I don't know why the name is, you know, gelato. you should know. I'm blanking on but that one. Now I have to look gelato. it up. It's like, it's like a tunic. It's like a dress. It's very simple. Oh, it's all yeah, in um, Medina. Medina. Yeah, it's all, you know, garter stitch. And I'm sorry, I'm just saying, going back to the whole kind of garter stitch, I need another design to, or I need another project with that too, because sometimes I'm like, okay, I need variety. But it's one of those designs that you just so want to wear. It's like, because yeah. it's, it's really practical and because it's like a dress kind of tunic, it's, it's mm-hmm. like great for like the beach or... I don't know. It's just, it's just, I can't wait. I can't wait till it's done. I'm super excited. Oh, great. Yeah. Yeah. That is a really cool piece. I like that one. Um, So great. So how can people find out about the knit along? Can they go to barocco.com or like where? Um, The best ways to find out is um, either to sign up for our email newsletter, Barocco Knit Bits, which um, if you go to barocco.com, you can sign up um, at the top of our, I think it's basically any screen you go to on barocco.com has that um, newsletter sign up. Um, we'll definitely be promoting it on the email newsletter on the Knitbits, and um, and then also in our Ravelry group, Barocco lovers um, on Ravelry. We that's kind of mostly where we host the knit along, um, the kind of where we have discussion and um, you know links to any like relevant blog posts, things like that. It will also be on our blog. Um, we'll be promoting it on Facebook and Instagram. We're at Barocco Yarn. Um, on all the platforms. So, Wonderful. Yeah. Well, Allison, this was a lot of fun and thank you so much for joining me today. Absolutely. Always a pleasure to chat with you. So please say um, hello to the Amy's and Warren. And uh, sure. so, yeah, so we will, um, you know, we'll be in touch soon. I'm so excited that you're part of the Knitter's Planner. So it's great to be a part of it. Thanks for inviting me. Well, I hope you enjoyed my enlightening conversation with Allison and definitely be sure to check out the show notes for this episode because there's an exciting giveaway happening over on Instagram for some Barocco knitting kits. So all you need to do is go to powerpearlspodcast.com forward slash 103 for all the details about the tag and follow giveaway that's happening right now. So it's happening right now. So you have to go over there and then you'll go over to Instagram because that's where you'll have to enter for your chance to win. So hopefully you're going to be one of those lucky winners. So I just want to wish you the best of luck and thanks for listening. See you next time.